How do you know that the convergence is guaranteed? Um, <clears throat> we really shouldn't do that now, because uh, it's going to eat up a bunch of time. What you can show... Um, and this, this would be a nice exercise for you to go through. Prove to yourself that after this step, the distances between the points and the centroid become smaller than they used to, and then prove to yourself that after this step, distances again become smaller. So at each step of the algorithm, actually at each sub-step, the distance from each point to its nearest centroid becomes smaller than it used to be. So uh, what you're proving is that with each iteration, as long as there are changes, the distance will go down. And it can't go down forever, right? It must, it must come to a certain point. Now, what k-means doesn't do is it doesn't converge to a global minimum. And we'll talk about that. Uh, but it does converge. Uh, now, in practice, if you're running this on the big data set, convergence isn't your concern. Because uh, you're only going to have time to run it for maybe like five iterations before you, know, you run out of time on your cluster. <laughs> Um, on whatever you're computing this on. Um, so you usually run for a fixed number of iterations. So you can prove that when you run this algorithm, it constantly minimizes that distance. So that is really the objective function of the k-means algorithm. It's the average distance from the point to its nearest centroid, right? So uh, you go over the clusters j, and then for each data point that is aligned to cluster J, you, t you look at the dis square distance between CJ and that, uh, <clears throat> and that instance. So uh, you should be able to convince yourself that with each step of the algorithm, that distance gets smaller and smaller and smaller. <clears throat> uh, <coughs> uh, by the way, another way to interpret it is you can sort of think of it as variance. If the distance you're using is Euclidean, then this is exactly the variance of points around their uh, centroid. The total aggregate variance in the system is what you're minimizing. <clears throat> so it does converge. Uh, it does not converge to a global optimum. So where you start, those initial positions for the centroids determine where you will end up. And if you start in different positions, you can easily end up in different final places. So, uh, and that's... Um, and that's kind, of, uh, that's kind of a crappy part about the k-means algorithm. It means that depending on your random number generator, you'll end up with different clusters in different parts of the day. Now, uh, they'll, they'll still kind of make sense, but they will, they will not be the same. They will be different, depending on how you seed um, the centroid. So uh, if that bothers you greatly and you really want something a little bit more deterministic, then what you have to do is you have to run k-means multiple times. So you initialize the centroid in a certain way, run k-means until convergence, uh, record the distance that you got, the average variance. Uh, then do it again. Place the centroids in a different random starting point, run the algorithm again, you get a new variance, and then see if the new variance is smaller than the old variance. And if it is, then you keep that one. Uh, and, uh, and then you run it n times, and you pick the one that gives you the smallest variance. Does it guarantee global uh, minimum? No, of course it doesn't, but uh, you're getting closer and closer. And if, you're, if you do it infinitely many times, yes, you will find the global uh, minimum. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, so that is a problem, um, but there's actually a, um, there's, there's, a, there's a much bigger problem with k-means. Um, so when you think of a clustering method, particularly polythetic clustering method, uh, remember, polythetic clusters, things in the cluster should be close to each other, right? So you expect a method like that to put nearby points into the same clusters. And uh, interestingly, that is not guaranteed in k-means. So in k-means, if you had four data points, you could easily end up with a clustering that looks like that. Right? That is a local optimum. That is a local minimum. And of course, that's not something that you would want, right? You'd want these guys to be red and these guys would be uh, yellow. That's how you'd want to group them. But you can easily end up with a situation like that. So here's an example. Right? Uh, if the red centroid is right here, if the yellow centroid is right here, this is a stable minimum. And it won't move from this point because both of these points are closer to the red, both of these points are closer to, to the yellow. So it will converge, it will stop at this point, because 
there's no point in moving. And this looks like an extreme case. It looks like this will happen once in a million years. Uh, it's actually not. Uh, it's actually not the case. You can put the centroids anywhere in the plane as long as they're symmetric. If they're symmetric, like that, about the same distance from the line that cuts between them, you will end up with the same clustering configuration, and it won't get out of it. Question. Yeah, but wouldn't this, this problem be solved if you do what you just suggested? Wouldn't the case? Yes. So, uh, so the question is, uh, the, the comment is that yes, you can get out of this situation if you run it multiple times with different random starting points. Yes, if you run k-means multiple times, then on another iteration, it'll do the right thing. One of the centroids will grab these two guys, the other centroid will grab those two guys, and you will find a variance that is much smaller than the variance here. Yes, so if you do it iteratively, uh, you can do it. But the point is, on a single iteration, you're not guaranteed, on a single run of the k-means algorithm, you're not guaranteed that nearby points will end up in the final cluster. And we'll talk about methods that, that actually enforce this property, so methods that are nicer than k-means.